Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab code's on back order, and it's time for episode number 14 of our Pokemon Crystal version of Randomized Nuzlocke here on the channel. In the last episode, we took on the gym leader here in Azalea Town, Bugsy, the uh, supposed bug-type encyclopedia. And as you can see on the layout, got ourselves our second badge, the, was it Hive Badge, I think it's called? So now Pokemon up to level 30 will obey us that we get in trades, which we're not trading, so it doesn't really matter, but we can use cut outside of battle. Only problem is we don't have cut, but we are going to pick that up today. We're going to cut to the chase. I might have a title for the episode now. Anyway, and uh, we're going to continue on. We might get a couple encounters in this episode because as you'll see as we do our team recap, first up we have Fire Strike the Golbat at level 17, leading the pack. Scope Lens is the held item of choice to add more critical hits. We have Bite, Leech Life, Supersonic, and Screech. And, not bad, attack and speed both at 38. Very nice for a level 17 Pokemon. Next up is our only other active member, Sailor Pika, S. Pika, level 18 Quagsire with Mystic Water held item. We've got Slam, Water Gun, <coughs> excuse me, he's a bit of a Water Gun myself right now, and Tail Whip with nice physical stats. Very slow, but hey, she can dish out damage, she can take some hits. And we have the Egg, which is making sounds inside. It's going to hatch soon. That could be our first encounter of the episode. But what we're going to do, now that we've dealt with everything here in town, actually, it's been a day. Let's pick up some Pokeballs. Or, uh, I think they're going to be fast balls? Ah, Chaz, just finish your ball. Here. Boom. How many did we get? I don't even know. We'll find out. That turned out great. Try catching Pokemon with it. All right, let's give him some more Apricorns to work on some more uh, Pokeballs for us. We've got one black Apricorn. I mean, one heavy ball won't be bad. It's a free Pokeball anyway, which is kind of nice. Yeah, actually, I just realized this game is going to be good in the sense that we have free Pokeballs. If I eventually get to the point where I get every one of the seven Apricorn trees in my, you know, what you call it, routinely walking around path, then I'll have seven free Pokeballs every day. All right, I believe we have to go find a Farfetch'd. The Slowpoke have returned, but my apprentice hasn't come back from Ilex Forest. Where in the world is that lazy guy? So we're going to head into Ilex Forest and find the lazy guy. See if we can get ourselves the Cut HM. Now, of course, the HMs will not be randomized. Oh, by the way, we did beat our rival in the last episode, too, which was pretty nice. Ilex Forest is big. Be careful. Don't get lost. I don't think I speak to, or spoke to these people last time. The forest is watched over by its protector. Stay out of mischief. Now, for your chance to be named after one of the many, many Pokemon we're going to catch in this episode, because you know we're going to, except for this one, we've already got our encounter here in the forest. A Noctowl would have been interesting. I will say, wait, 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 wait. I looks forest. Yes, we did. We got a Noctu. <sighs> Boy, we had quite a time a couple episodes back. <sighs> Anyways, moving onward. Uh, yeah, so we already got our encounter in here, but there's going to be something in here that gives us access to other encounters. Oh man, my boss is going to be steaming. The Farfetch that cuts trees for charcoal took off on me. I can't go looking for it here in the Ilex Forest. It's too big and dark and scary for me. I guess it's up to me being a four, five, seven, whatever league champion time I get. Whatever. It's a missing Pokemon. Qua! Scared it. Now, is there a big specific trick to this, or do I simply just going to go to the top and scare it down? Randomized items. We find... I never melt ice. We don't have an ice move, but it's an ice item to pick up. Get it? Ha! Huh? And nice. Ah, uh, nice. Anyway, what else is in here? We did catch a not to. Which we see, we are so. Saw What's with the bird Pokemon in the forest? Doesn't that seem a little on the nose? I guess. Anyway, watch the egg hatch while we're trying to chase this Farfetch down. That would be actually kind of cool. Now, is there a hidden item here? Something seems to uh, peak my memory about some sort of mystical, invisible type item somewhere here. That would have been nice to pick up, I will say. <coughs> Excuse me. A wall for alligator. You know, you don't see them that often. Reminds me of the wild Venusaur that were outside um, Union Cave. Uh, Route 34, I believe it was. Interesting. Alright, Farfetch'd, move it. Go, go straight down, would ya? Don't go to the right, please. Just, 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 just go down. Perfect. Thank you very much. This is nice and quick and easy. And back you go. Does he hit the wall? Of the tree? Yes, he does. Look at that. Poor Farfetch. Knocked itself silly. And look, the man's right here. The uh, woodcutter guy. What? I'm being attacked in front of this kid's face. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this actually leads into the question of the day. Which, as I say, for your chance to have... Feel free to answer the questions of the day on each video. And I scroll back and see like the most recent comments. And pick a name from the viewers that leave a comment. 
and uh, you might get a Pokemon named after you, and hopefully not utterly destroyed, as happened to the entire team a couple of episodes back. Wow, thanks a whole bunch. My boss's Pokemon won't obey me because I don't have a badge. You should probably get a badge. Quah, indeed. What do you say, sir? Ah, oh, my Farfetch'd. You found it for us, kid? Without it, we wouldn't be able to cut trees for charcoal. Thanks, kid. Now, how can I thank you? I know, here, take this. We've got HMO1 Cut. I don't know if any of our Pokemon can learn Cut. Put the HMO1 in the TM pocket. Weird, the HM goes in the TM pocket. But anyway, that's the Cut HM. Teach that to a Pokemon to clear small trees. Of course, you have to have the Gym Badge from Azalea to use it. So let's just check and see my, my uh, suspicions are confirmed that we cannot teach Cut to either of our two Pokemon. As you see right there. So, what we gotta do is go back and get a Pokemon from the PC that can use Cut. <coughs> hey, excuse me. There's rats and birds all over this forest. That's crazy. But, what we're gonna do is actually just gonna stroll around town a little bit. We're gonna see if we can hatch this egg. Maybe the egg can learn Cut. Well, not the egg, but what comes out of the egg. You know what I mean. But anyways, I was alluding to earlier, my coughing, I just got back inside from taking the uh, garbage out for the evening, and it is freezing out there. I've had a bit of a cold starting up the past little while, and I guess maybe a little bit of cold air has exasperated it? Is that the word? I don't even know. We're going to get a poison cure berry. But yeah, question of the day, would you rather be too hot or too cold? So, normally, my answer to this would be, I would rather be too cold, because if you're cold, you can throw on, like, you know, sweaters, and throw on a blanket, put a heater on, stuff like that. There are ways you can fight against the cold, and it's not that bad. But, on the other hand, if it's too hot, like in the middle of summer, a dry heat wave going on, and, like, there's only so much you can do to cool down. Like, you can put a bunch of fans on, but eventually, if the temperature of the air is just super hot, all the fans are doing is blowing hot air around you, so it's not really that effective. So, under normal circumstances, I would say I'd rather be too cold. Oh, I'm kind of 50-50 on that one. But if you have a preference, let me know if you'd rather be too hot or too cold. Make sure to put uh, hashtag QOTD in the comments so I can see the comment pop up right in front of my eyes and have a chance to be named after what's going to hatch up. All right, it might be legendary. It probably isn't knowing my luck, but let's see. Well, to the comments we go. Actually, it's a poison type. We already have a poison type on our team. We can't even use this. Ah, but let's get to the comments. Uh, it is a male Venonat. Not that the gender really matters that much because uh, we've already misnamed the wrong gender Pokemon kind of thing. So let's see. Last question was, I believe it was, which is your favorite Pokemon generation? And I had a couple of people answer that. Uh, what we're gonna do? We already named a Pokemon after Andrew Warren, who says Gen 5 is your favorite generation. But since currently the Goldie known as Andrew is in the box and gone forever, we're gonna go with Warren. So we'll get another Pokemon name, although this one's going right into the box. We've got so many poison types in the PC. There is currently a Nidoran in there, I believe. Nidoran male. And now we're going to have a Venonat in there. <sighs> I'd like to get another Pokemon to add to our team. Alright, anyway. Box number one, I believe. We are box number one. Okay, we're going to deposit Warren, level five. We can train Warren up if we need to at some point. Now we got to switch over to our Dunzo box, because we do got to bring back one of our defeated Pokemon to teach Cut to them. This is a little sort of requirement sometimes in a Nuzlocke, where if you have no access to use an HM, you are allowed to have a temporary HM slave, so to speak. Uh, so let's go with... I do know that Unknown can learn cut. So we're going to bring back Unknown. Not in the party. Can't use this particular Pokemon, sadly. Thanks to a Magmire that does not like to be paralyzed at all. Except for one time, it was paralyzed. And we missed two wraps back to back. Where's the fairness, right? RNG. I know. Okay, Unknown wants to learn cut. And as soon as we do get a Pokemon on the team that can learn cut in place of Unknown, we will swap it out. 
It doesn't really matter what we replace. We're going to replace Rap, because we're not going to be able to use this Pokemon battle-wise. I could have just actually forgotten Vine Whip, to be honest. All right, but we have Cut. We have the badge. We're ready to move on. There is a person in the forest I'm looking forward to meeting up with and uh, getting what they hand over to us. When I randomized the game, I did randomize what attacks are taught to you by TMs, but I did make sure field TMs, attacks that can be used outside of battle, do stay the same. At least I'm pretty sure. HMs are always going to be like, you have to have HMs in the game, so those can't be swapped out. But there, I'm not walking now, there is one particular type of attack I want to pick up. Ilex Forest is so overgrown with trees that you can't see the sky. Please watch out for items that may have been dropped. Now, if I knew where to find the hidden items, I would be going right to those spots, picking up whatever I can find. But, since I don't know where they all show up, I'm not going to be going all willy-nilly clicking A on every spot, even though there could be some really good items hidden all throughout this forest. Although, this one's pretty clear. We pick this up, we've got Repel. I could sell the Repel and get cash quite well, but I'll keep it for now. Of course, I can't sell it here in the forest. There's no people around. We're also going to pick up an iron. That's also good for selling. It also helps us play. So let's hold on to some cash in our pocket. I want that item. I get attacked. I know it. But we pick up a great ball. Not bad. All right, here's where I'm going to be Mr. Hypocritical. I don't like to use anything but regular Pokeballs when it comes to playthroughs. Just because the added challenge of it is a thing, and I just like the look of the red and white Pokeball. Admittedly though, when it comes to things like Kurt's Pokeballs, I kind of don't mind using those because how unique they are. You, you, you can't just go into a shop and buy heavy balls. You have to have them made for you. So in that sense, I'm not that opposed to the Apricorn Pokeballs, but the Great Ball will probably just sell it. All right. What am I doing? I'm shaking trees using Headbutt. It's fun. Here, you try it too. We got TMO2, which should still te 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 teach Headbutt. Rattle trees with Headbutt. Sometimes sleeping Pokemon fall out. So let's just make sure we got us a Headbutt. There it is. Field moves are still where they should be. All right, we're going to teach Headbutt to Espika, who is the only one that can learn it. That's a good replacement for Slam, too, by the way. So, since we have an encounter in the forest, we cannot get something here. But we're heading back to Azalea Town, now that we can headbutt trees in town. New encounter, coming our way. Might, might hopefully be able to catch it, who knows. How did that grow back so quick? Usually they only grow back when you've left the field, left the area, and come back in. Did I leave the area? I don't think I did. Weird, isn't it? Might be just because we had an encounter. Although, if that's the case, we should see it grow back now. What's the deal? Why'd that grow back so quick? Might be because we left it off the screen, maybe. I guess they only grow back when you're, they're not, you're, you're not looking at them. Kind of like the, uh, the Boo Buddies in Mario Brothers. Alright, let us bop a tree. This is still in city limits, okay. Come on, let's see what we can get. Pokemon could be sleeping in the tree. Nothing. All right, we're gonna keep doing this. We need an encounter. We need more Pokemon. Non-poison type, if you will. All right, first encounter for Azalea Town. That ain't no poison type. It is sadly a water type, which means we cannot add it to our team, but it is a new encounter. I'm gonna say a Leech Life will not knock you out. We are level 17, you're level 10, but it's like base negative four power. There you go, see? Clearly, it's easy enough to get. All right. Question is, will we catch it? We got a couple of fast balls we can make use of. I don't think those are like the quick balls of current generation where if you use it at the first turn of a battle, they have the best chance to catch. I believe it's based off of... Well, technically, I think the fast ball is for Pokemon that run away, like Entei, Raikou, Suicune. Which, if they are going to be randomized, when they start running around... Are there going to be, like, different species that run around? Like, can we track, say, like, if it was a wild Bellsper or something like that? Are we able to track that? That would be interesting. All right, so sadly, having lost our team, we cannot put this thing to sleep. Um, no, we can't. I'm trying to think, we're trying to think, what do we have on our team that can status condition this? Nothing. Sadly, nothing right now. Can Golbat learn hypnosis? I seem to think it might be a bit of an egg move. For some reason. 
Come on, wake up, one more leech life. Just want to weaken it a little bit more. Fire strike, you got this. Wake up, boom, leech life. Yes! Critical hit, bring it down to the red. I'll be okay with that. All right, can't hit it again. A little bit too low. All right, we are on a timer. We gotta do this. Let's go Pokeball, we got 16. We got two chances to catch this thing. Ah, because once we get down to a one count, we have to switch out. We can't lose a Pokemon to Paris on. Ah. And if we don't catch this, I will say the consolation is that we can't use it on our team right now anyway. I would like to have more backup, but we're not going to get backup from Azalea Town, sadly. This thing happens to know how to knock itself out. Well, the best we could here. Let's let it faint. Let's get the experience. You know, why not? You know, you're gonna steal an encounter, a, a capture from me, Politoed. You're giving me something. I'll take a couple experience points off you. And that is that. But where are we at on the time? We still got about eight, nine minutes or so. We're gonna head on up to Route. What's it called? Thirty-five. Heading up towards Goldenrod City. See if we can get another encounter. If we can even get through the forest, now that I think about it. Are there trainers in the forest? We will find out. One positive side to having just a team of two is that you're not spreading the experience across as many Pokemon. So they can level up quicker. There are people that solo run through Pokemon games. They use just their starting Pokemon. And I get, I've heard that in, in Gen 2, you can get to like level close to level 20 just from fighting trainers on your way to this city here and the ace used what level 16 so yeah having fewer pokemon is kind of good type wise not the best thing because if you have like an electric type and you fight a ground type you're done but generally it's kind of a good thing all right what do we got show us a shiny you know what as i said earlier shiny claws hey Par i think don't paris normally show up here it's kind of cool Shiny Claws is a thing where if you happen to find that 1 in 8,000 chance, I think back in this generation, of finding a wild shiny Pokemon, generally, people say you're allowed to catch it. Which, I'm gonna catch it. I will be hesitant to use it. Unless it happens to be our first encounter. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Wouldn't it have been amazing if I was talking with that and then a shiny for alligator showed up? That would have been pretty sweet. Do you all have your shiny for alligator? from Pokemon Go Community Day in January. I've got, I think I got just the, yeah, I caught three. Shiny Totodile, I believe it was. Or is it four? I don't know, I caught some. You are a trainer. Don't sneak up on me like that. You frightened a Pokemon away. Did it, did it, did I do that or did it perish song itself? That could be a thing. All right, Bug Catcher Wayne has a Porygon. We fought a bunch of these out on Route 34 preparing for the gym. It's kind of funny seeing it convert to different typings and stuff. Which is... Have there been any other attacks? Actually, no, what am I thinking? I was going to say, have there been any other attacks that really change uh, a Pokemon's typing nowadays? Because when you think about it, Gen 1 had some pretty interesting mechanics in like Transform, Mimic, which would permanently copy for the duration of that fight uh, any attack, and uh, type conversions and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. But then again, nowadays we have stuff like Trick or Tree or Forest Curse, which does actually not just change typing, add typing. We got Soak as well. You know, you can turn any Pokemon in the game into a Water Grass type or a Water Ghost type. That is confusion. I didn't even think about Psychic Moves, but we're fine. Not even confused. Look at that. Perfect. But yeah, any Pokemon can be turned into a uh, Water and Ghost or Water and Grass type. Soak them, hit them with Forest Curse or the other thing, and you just change their typings completely around. A Pokemon I've never seen before fell out of the tree when I used Headbutt. I ought to use Headbutt in other places too. Foreshadowing. Ah, oh, I'm under attack. But also, speaking of typings and changing and stuff like that, a. what is it? A Paris with. no. a Scizor. If you could get Scizor, like add... Wade, I'm trying to talk about something here. Good evening, Chaz. It's me, Wade. Were you awake? The bug catching contest is at National Park today. 
Are you going, Chaz? I'm trying to make up my mind. See you later. I'm not. But that could be something to do Thursday. You guys could see it on Friday, perhaps, because I'm sure around Thursday we'll be here in Golden Rod City near National Park. That would be interesting. But anyway, if you take a scissor, you hit it with Forest Curse to add grass type into it, and then if you were to skill swap dry skin onto it, you've just given it, what is it, a times 16 weakness to fire. It is normally, like, you know, bug is weak to fire, so that's times 2. Steel is weak to fire, that's times 4, the multipliers. Times 8, if you hit it with Forest Curse to add grass type, in, and times 2 again, so times 16 with dry skin. Ember takes you down at that point. Unless you could also swap on Sturdy give it two abilities, you know. Did you see the shrine honoring the protector? It watches over the forest from across time. I think that it must be a grass type Pokemon. You've done your Pokemon Go special research. Oh, honey, you're making a Pokedex? It must be hard if Pokemon won't appear. Try using this TM. Now, this should still be Sweet Scent because this is a field move. It's Sweet Scent. Use it on enemy Pokemon. Now, it does lower evasiveness on the target. And it also makes Pokemon appear in the wild. But remember what I said. Wait. I'm checking my town map. I thought Route 34 was... I'm messed up. Route 33 is outside Union Cave. I don't even need to check the map. What I want to do is talk to all these trainers before looking for an encounter. Because if I find someone that says, Oh, I'll call you if a rare species shows up. I want to have the option of that rare species being our encounter, you know? Berry trees grow new berries every day. Make a note of which trees bear which berries. Bear berries? Berry, interesting. Let's go. What you got? This is where I do my training. You know, on second thought, I kind of want to just add another encounter. Uh... Well, this guy's got four Pokemon. This battle might take us the rest of the episode anyway, so... If we have more than a minute left on my timer when we're done fighting this guy, I'll look for an encounter today. If not, I'll wait, fight the other trainers in the next episode, and see if anyone promises me a potential rare encounter later on. Sound good? Hopefully it does, because that's what I'm going with. Alright, first one down, Fire Strike level 18. Can we learn Mega Wing Attack? Nothing at all. Well, okay then. Dratini! That was our starter in Pokemon Yellow Randomized Nuzlocke. It didn't last the whole time, sadly, but... Still cool to see. A critical bite. Scope lands. Gotta love it. Down goes the myth... Not mythical. Mystical. Dragon Pokemon. Hey, I remember you from Sprout Tower, Kingler. How's it going? Have a bite. You got no special defense. We don't have good special attack, though, is the thing. So, I mean, yeah, you know, like that. One more bite. Drops you. And what's the final Pokemon? Watch it be... I want to see... Show us a legendary, you know? I know I'm asking for a kick in the butt, but I want to see a legendary Pokemon. Legendary. That would have been interesting to see in Bugsy's Gym Heart, because that is normally his ace. And for the bite. So a minute 40 left on my timer. I'm just jumping in the grass. We're going to see what we can find out here. Beaten by a passing stranger. I'm not strange. Actually, I'm completely strange. I'm going to train even harder. After all, I'm trying to become a gym leader. All right. Let's see what our encounter for Route 34 is. Right here. Second blade of grass. Fire, dark, we don't have either of those types yet. I would like to add this to our team. <coughs> Excuse me, so, obviously bite, it resists it. How much does it resist it? That was a critical. Oh yeah, I was going to say, not enough. Don't even! Alright, tell you what, tell you what, we're going to try this. Fastball, go. I don't know if it's going to matter. Don't roar me away. Yes! Okay! Woo! That was interesting. Houndour's data added to the Pokedex. Houndour, the dark Pokemon. Around dawn, its ominous howl echoes through the area to announce that this is its territory. Would you like to give a nickname? Yes, I would. Let's go back to the comments. And Unknown Spike has left an answer to the question of the day. All Pokemon generations are your favorites, except Gen 5, which is your least favorite. And asking, what is my favorite generation? I'm pretty sure I answered that in the last one, but I like Gen 7 because of all the features and enhancements and stuff that it has. And basically it has a lot of what the earlier generations have given, plus more. 
It is lacking some things, like Pokemon following and stuff like that, but I already kind of rambled about that. So, since we've already named Bellsprout Unknown, which once we get to Goldenrod City, don't let me forget, I gotta put it back in the PC, we're gonna go with Spike, which kind of fits for a, uh, a puppy dog, actually. Granted, it is a female, and this is, you know, Spike's not really a female name, so to speak, but it's 2019, no judgment here. So Spike is added to our team. Let's take a look and see what Spike is working with. No held item. I was hoping there'd be a held item. All right, but anyway, Spike level 12, Dark and Fire type, nice. Uh, Leer, Ember, and Roar. Interesting that they do still use their PP in this game. Like in Gen 1, they didn't. They had unlimited PP. It did not track what their PP was, but cool to see that they actually use it. And speed is 22. That ain't bad at all. Nice speed stat. All right, but that is going to wrap things up for today's episode. We are getting back on track, and even though we only have three Pokemon, we are getting some backup in the PC. Well, we have a backup. We have a Nidoran, but it's backup. Anyway, we'll see what happens next time as we go into Goldenrod City, and hopefully Whitney does not have anything as dangerous as a Miltank. Wouldn't it be interesting if I actually set this to similar strength Pokemon for trainers and she had something like Miltank? Let's not even go there. Anyway, hopefully you folks enjoyed today's episode of our Pokemon Crystal Version Randomized Nuzlocke. If you did, feel free to hit me, the, hit me with that like button down below. Don't actually hit me, because I would assume a button is made of hard plastic and that probably would cause some sort of an injury. Maybe not in, you know, severe enough to go to the hospital for, but might leave a mark, you know. Don't really want that. Unless it's like a big thumbs up on my face. Then I can just go like, hit the like button. Anyways, I'm rambling. Thanks again for watching, folks, and if you want to see some more episodes of Pokemon Crystal Version Randomized Nuzlocke, link in the description to the playlist, link during the outro as well. You can subscribe for some more regular Pokemon content, and join as a member if you want some members-exclusive perks, which I will address probably the next episode. Yeah, live streaming has been a bit of a hiatus on the channel. I've just had a lot of busy downtime. That doesn't even make sense. A lot of busy time during my normal downtime. There we go. And haven't been able to do any streaming, but I'm going to try to aim for like later this week, or if not, sometime this weekend, to come back with another live stream. And I might just do a whole bunch of the games all at once, just to get us all hanging out together with all these different games. So stay tuned for that. I should have time. I shouldn't say I should have time. I hope to have time this weekend or later this week. So just stay tuned to the channel. I apologize that it's all by the wayside. Bear with me. I appreciate your support and your interest regardless. So... All that being said, I'm just going to be a broken record now. Professor Chaz is now signing off. Thank you folks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.